I woke up one morning and my left ear was completely blocked and itchy. The next couple of days it got really, really painful, so I went to the doctor and he looked in my ear and said he couldn't see anything because I had so much wax in my ear. I started to get really, really bad tinnitus. It started being literally like a battery up against my ear where I could sometimes not even really hear people through it, it was so loud. And it gradually became quieter and quieter. Put my head on the pillow and it would be this massive chord of tones. At the time I was gigging quite a lot, probably doing four gigs a week, and then tours, it could be 10 dates back to back. So it wasn't until you weren't playing that you realised that after a day it was still there. To be fair, I didn't do anything about it. Having the ringing in my ears was what you had, you know, that went with the gig. I used to go to sort of drum and bass and upset raves when I was 16, 17. Like, you probably know it's loud. And I used to go and be quite stupid, um, sit inside bass bins and stupid things like that. I had been sat inside a bass bin and then I came home and I just had this really weird ringing noise in my ears. Didn't really know what it was. And then I sort of ignored it for a bit and just carried on being stupid. But then it started to get worse. I obviously started DJing and going into clubs and being around sound systems. So obviously over the past nine years, it's just got worse and worse and worse. I'm 31 and I have tinnitus, I think for as long as I can remember, but definitely since I was maybe 12 or 13 at least. And before that, I don't remember if I had it or not. I didn't even know tinnitus was a thing, so I didn't realize that it was not normal. <laughs> When I was a kid and we had televisions that had valves in them, when you turn them on and they would kind of warm up, you'd get like a very high pitch whistle from them. It really annoying sort of thing. That's what it reminds me of. Just imagine if you had sort of tiny black spots in front of your eyes all the time and they're never going to block your vision, but they're going to be here. You know those drills that the dentists use in your mouth? It's like having one of them next to your ear, permanently. I'm pretty sure that we put names on these things, as in, you know, humming, whistling and, and all that, but it's a mix of all that. It's not just one sound, probably, it's a lot of sound. and the tinnitus just kept getting louder and louder. For about a month, I barely slept for about an hour every night. When that happens, when you're that sleep deprived, you really lose it, and I'd really lost it. So I was just really worried because I was right at the beginning of a PhD in sound art and was a musician as well, so it was sort of my whole life career. You know, it felt like it was really threatened by this. When I stopped and wasn't socially and professionally around music, it was there all the time, and that, that's when it became annoying. It was day after day, it was not going away. I woke up and I thought, whoa, the, the noise was extremely loud and very high-pitched, and I thought, whoa, what was happening? Wanting to call my family straight away, tell them I had a problem. Needless to say, it was three of the worst days of my life <laughs> because it really was horrible, I just couldn't sleep. I took a lot of sleeping pills, as I sometimes did, but I took a lot. I wanted to go to sleep, but at the same time, I felt very scared of going to sleep. I, I started having a sort of just weird images in my mind that I wouldn't wake up and things like that. My GP wasn't really being very proactive about it. Just kept saying to me that it was going to be fine, and I knew it was sort of more than that. I did manage to see an EMT. He said it's pretty mysterious. I mean. There's nothing I can say, really. He said oh, it was just a byproduct of noise-induced or music-induced hearing loss. And that's what it was. Like you do with all the doctors, they tell you and you just go, no, oh, uh, okay then, so what am I supposed to do? Well, you can't do anything about it. So that was the kind of turning point. Music was such a big part of my life since I wanted to play the drums as a kid. So, for, I don't know, six years old, to then think that I couldn't 
just listen to music, then if I'm going to have to give up playing it, then that's what it's got to be. I think for probably about five years, I didn't want anything to do with music at all. I started doing boxing and uh, I really like it. I like the fact that for me it's a lot about the comparisons I can make with it with life, especially right now, is that you know you get hit, you've got to get back up. And with tinnitus it's kind of like this constant fighter in your head, like he wants to bring you down and you have to hit it back every time you feel like it's, no, it's like, you know, I'm the master, you're just like, you're in my head and either you fight it or you just want to run away from it. I think I was really traumatised and feeling really isolated from everyone around me because nobody else could see or hear or experience what was going on. I found it really hard to feel weak and need help. I think sometimes I found that difficult. By this time, I, I actually really was suicidal. I was seriously suicidal. And I'd never been, I've never felt like that in my life. So I knew that it needed, I needed to do something about it. So I went to the CNT consultant privately because she wouldn't refer me. But he was really amazing and completely took everything that I was saying seriously. So he ruled out any sort of physical reasons why I might have tinnitus, if only to put my mind at rest. It had been such a difficult process of coming to terms with possibly having this sound for the rest of my life. I kind of withdrawn in lots of ways from friends or family or work so it was really hard to start building all those parts of my life back with tinnitus being part of my life as well. I noticed mid-30s socially I was having problems with hearing people in noisy situations or you know, a lot of people talking I can't quite focus on what people are saying. My friends like going out a lot. Bars I'm, I tend to be a little bit less scared of but still I try to avoid them uh, but definitely clubs I mean that's one thing my friends have just told them no, no no I'm not coming with you and I would never explain why. There were certain social situations that I was finding hard because I had really really bad sound sensitivity. Couldn't be in a room with more than two people. If I'm in a bar or a cafe at a big table, I can talk to the people around me, but not the people at the other end of the table. Now I don't even try to join a conversation that's too far away from me. So you do end up sometimes seeming a bit unsocial. My experience of hearing protection at that point w was rubbish. So if you put earplugs in, or you, you couldn't hear the music properly anyway. When I was younger, if you, you did have a really loud gig, if you come out and you go, oh, I can't hear anything, you've got that ringing, that it, you've had a good time, and how, how mad was that, how loud, <laughs> loud it actually was. Things did change when I felt I, was, I could protect myself. I didn't become so paranoid about being in noisy environments. It's always going to be loud, um, festivals, clubs, you can't really do anything about it. I like clubs with loud sound systems. Um, I always have loved loud music, but I think they need to have it at a reasonable level. If you're gonna go to a loud club, then just get some earplugs. First four months, I would meditate for two hours every night. I'd have to do things every day before in two years time, it would have got to the point where I could manage it. I have a really short attention span. I can concentrate for about five minutes in silence, but then straight away I'll just hear it. And then it's hard to get it out of your mind after you've heard it. Once you hear it, it kind of starts to take over. The more relaxed I am, I think the, the better it is. If I'm tired and stressed, the perception of it is definitely louder. I like being in the country, I and mean, there's quite a few noises in the country. At night times, being indoors in the country when it is completely silent that is more of a problem. It's finding the balance between having somewhere that's reasonably quiet, but not dead quiet, that you're distracted by the ringing. For me, I really blamed myself for having it. I really felt like it was my fault that it didn't go away. And that if I was a different person, I would have been able to just 
let it go. What did I do to do this? the things I've been doing the past few days? I mean, going out, drinking, smoking a bit. You tend to think, well, could this be the reason or this? So I had a hearing test. So oh yes, Mr. Hill, class, classic noise-induced hearing loss. H have you worked in the aircraft industry? And I said, no, I've worked in music for like 10, 15 years, you know. And he said, well, wh why didn't you wear any hearing protection? And I was like, what are you talking about? I, I, I want to hear the music. I feel stupid that I didn't even think about it. I feel music education let me down. I feel angry about that. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if some of my brothers and sisters didn't know I had it. Most people don't know about it, but then I'm not doing anything to help awareness. It's hard to describe, for one. It's, it's not something that other people can relate to, so it's not interesting for them because you're like, what, what have you got? I don't, I don't know. In my story, it's just something I have. If people knew that exposing themselves to a really loud noise is going to cause it, then yeah, but I don't, I don't even know myself how other people get it. Loads of people that have chronic conditions like this have to make a massive personal effort every day, which can go very unnoticed. It's so invisible and silent, but it's really hard work. I'm not very confident about the fact that it's going to go away. Why would it go away? That's what I'm thinking. Why? There's, just, there's no reason. Because we know there's no actual definitive treatment for it, I'm thinking, well, if it's a lifestyle, um, well, might as well start getting used to it today. It's a combination of having some really bad things that changed, but lots and lots of other really good things that came off the back of that, just as significant as the difficult things. I'm really glad that I had to do all that meditating, because now I meditate every day. I didn't have the energy to put up with people that, you know, didn't make you feel good or didn't treat you well. I've had to really respect myself more, actually. Understand, well, why am I blaming myself for having a condition that affects the millions and millions and millions of people? Definitely, for me, I'm much more aware of other sounds. Um, and I appreciate them much more, much more careful with what I do, uh, where I go, um, and the impact that it's going to have on me. Yeah, it makes you think about a lot of other things that before were taken for granted, and then you sort of think about them now. It took me about two years until I wasn't scared about it anymore. The first big psychological challenge or leap for me was having something that you couldn't find a strategy to solve. You, in fact, the worst thing is to focus on it and focus on it and try and think your way out of it. You can't. The whole of my life, I'd kind of come up against challenges, face them head on, you know, work hard and really, really do everything you can and then you solve it. And this is the first thing that I'd come across that it didn't work like that, you know. What you had to do was accept it and know that it's going to be there as long as it's going to be there. And you don't have to uh, fight with it, you don't have to battle with it, you just encounter it. I just started to see it as a part of me and just like I have a hand, I have tinnitus.